All right, I hope you're ready to make a lot of super cute, fun mugs. The first thing I'm gonna do is very lightly grid off my paper into some different areas so I know where my mugs are going to go. So I'm creating four columns across and about five columns down. And this way I'll kind of be able to space out my mugs fairly easily. You could do fewer mugs, more mugs. Um, if your paper is this size, I wouldn't suggest doing any more because it'll start to feel really crowded and small and you wanna have room for those details. Now I'm drawing my mugs and I'm making them pretty kind of generic random shapes. So generally round-ish, kind of rectangular. Some of the fun is making them a little bit different from each other. So I'm trying to make some shorter, some taller, some have a handle on the right, some have a handle on the left, some don't have a handle at all. Some are more rectangular and even the handle could be more rectangular. So you can kind of get as crazy as you want. If you want to create a lot of variety, then changing those simple shapes can be good. It also might look really neat to pick a style and make them all the exact same style. That will make it so that the colors and designs that you choose are what are more different and your styles will be the same. In this case, I'm going a little crazy and I'm making all the styles and the colors will be different too. So it'll just be a whole party of colors and mugs. I'm gonna keep going and repeat some of these mug designs I've already done. To be honest, I cannot think of a brand new design for every single mug, so there's gonna be some that are the same. So what I'm starting to look for is which ones I created a while ago and that are not next to the new space. So here, this kind of half circle shape mug, I did that up a few rows and over, but I didn't do any in those immediate areas, so that's why I felt like I could do it again. So keeping the different kinds kind of spaced out and in their own areas uh, helps that variety and not have it feel kind of unbalanced if I have a lot of the same thing in one area and then the other ones are heavier in a different area so trying to space out which ones I've done where uh, this is kind of the part where you get to have fun so don't worry about copying the ones I've done exactly think about which ones are most interesting to you but also don't be a perfectionist it's okay if they're not exact or they're a little wonky or maybe there are some that are similar side by side don't fret over it it's all about having fun and enjoying the process and just getting creative so I hope that you can forgive yourself for some little things today that might happen if any of your mug lines ended up kind of dark, go ahead and erase them a little bit now to make them lighter. We don't want to have any super dark pencil lines when we get started on painting. Speaking of erasing, it'll be time to now go and erase those grid lines that we use to plan out our mugs. If a pencil line ends up under watercolor paint, we can't erase it. It's like it's been sealed with color and water, so we want to make sure that any lines we don't want to see are gone. So erasing those grid lines in between all of our mugs, but also keeping our mugs there. So try not to erase them. But as I mentioned earlier, if your mug is really dark, just very lightly erase it so it's a little less visible. And it'll be okay if we have a little bit of pencil line underneath the paint that are on our mugs because that'll kind of act as an edge. So that won't be at the end of the world. That's why we can leave those pencil lines there because we're going to paint them and that will kind of act almost as a shadow. We won't really notice those ones. So now that our grid line is gone, it is time to start painting. When you are painting your mugs, you want to pick a brush that is small enough to do all the dirty work inside of those small shapes. So I'm using a number two round brush, which will fit just fine. I don't know my brushes and sizes, so I have to look at my brush to figure that out. So if you just pick a brush that looks right for the size, you'll be good to go. Now that we are painting, I am going to be painting my mugs in kind of rainbow order so that I can play with all of my colors today. You can either follow along to do a similar idea or of course, as you go, you can play with different and new colors. You'll notice here I'm using a wet on wet technique. That means I got all of my mug wet with a little bit of color so I could see what I was doing. And now I'm going back in and I'm dropping in more bits of paint to it. Now that first mug was red so I can start my rainbow theme and I'm going to continue that red to my second mug so that I can have a gradual change. Once again it was wet on wet so I got my whole mug wet and I'm adding some more paint to drip it in. Now I'm going to go backwards a little bit and put a tiny bit of blue in that first mug just to hint at the opposite direction of the rainbow. So I'll actually be going red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple order, but the rainbow is not actually a one direction, it goes in a circle. So it repeats after purple returns to red. So I put that tiny bit of blue in that first one to hint at that other direction. 
Then you'll notice the second mug, I've been adding some oranges to it to kind of slowly make it turn into my next color group so that I can really make that transition happen slowly. So it's now more of a red orange, which is a tertiary color. Tertiary colors are in between the primary and secondary colors. I'm gonna do a similar thing in the mug below because I'm gonna make my rainbow color go across the paper diagonally because why not have a challenge? Because it's harder to figure out which ones change where. And believe me, it was kind of challenging. So I hope watching me do it makes it a bit easier for you. Since I have now my red, my kind of red orange, I'm moving in closer to a real orange or kind of a gold orange, a little more yellows in it, and kind of a, again, moving across that diagonal and trying to, even as I change colors, have fun with the paint. So here I left a little bit of a white highlight in that mug just to keep it interesting. While the mugs are still wet, I can go back and drop in little groups of colors that will spread and flow uh, just like beautiful watercolors do. If that's not something you've played with before, um, using wet watercolors inside of wet areas, it's so much fun. And it's something that you can use um, to really good success in this exercise. Now that I have my goldy yellow oranges, I'm going to my more bright yellows. Um, again, kind of moving across my paper. It helps to kind of do a few mugs at a time since I already have that paint on my brush and our mugs are so small, they don't use that much paint. So I can kind of jump between mugs, jump back and forth, um, as I'm building it to use up that paint off my paintbrush. Now I know I'll be going to green soon, and so I'm laying a base layer for this so that my green is not a super green, but again, it's that tertiary color of yellow green. I mentioned earlier, tertiary colors are in between primary and secondary. So you usually think of you know red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Well, it actually goes red, red, orange, 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 yellow orange yellow and it can go like that to really mix those colors well so i'm trying to think of those in between colors to really make my first of all mugs more interesting but also the uh, change of rainbow color more interesting because i have those more subtle in between tones as i go through the different mug designs don't be afraid to play with pattern as well. So in my last yellow green mug, I literally made it kind of yellow on one half, green on the other half, which kind of makes it look more just duo toned, two different colors. Here I'm gonna drop in some little bits of green to just see how they spread. Again, using that wet on wet technique. If you can't tell by now, it's one of my favorite things with these sort of little painting groups. Um, and that just, again, it, it makes the color change, but it also creates a lot of interest with the different patterns and designs. We'll do a lot more of those patterns and designs when we get to the end with our pen. And so if this, you just wanna focus on groups of color, that is totally fine and it'll still look absolutely amazing. Here I'm going now moving into the actual greens, so trying to move away from the yellows, but it's still kind of a bright green. It's not a super dark or cool green. Another fun color theory idea is the idea that colors are all warm and cool. It just depends on what direction uh, they're leaning. So typically we think of warm colors as red, orange, and yellow, and cool colors as blue, green, and purple. However, there can be warm greens and cool greens. A more yellow green is a more warm green. A more blue green is a cooler green. And these tones can really affect the mood of an artwork. They can affect the temperature, literally, of what it looks like if it looks warm or looks cool, especially in landscapes. Thinking about the warm or cool tones of your color are super important. For this exercise, it's more just a fun idea to pay attention to. Are the colors you're mixing more warm or more cool? Do they change the way that the mood is or the feeling is? And then, of course, you can add fun little details. Like here, I added that little um, bead of smoke or um, steam coming off of the cup. I'm, sometimes I'm even adding handles that I didn't draw because it just feels like it needs it. Of course, you can always change your mind and add more things when you're painting, even if you didn't draw it initially. As I'm getting closer to the blues, I'm gonna start to dip some blues into my greens and start leaning that green more towards the cool tones that I was talking about. So slowly transitioning from that yellow to yellow green to green to blue green and then hopefully to blue. Now I love the color blue and I have quite a few different blues on my paint palette that I jump between. So making the blues will be a little bit easier since I have so many different blues already. But I'm gonna to try to start with a lighter blue just cause it's closer to green a really dark um, or navy blue is gonna feel a little more separate. So picking those brighter colors if you have the options to go with a more brighter, happier kind of blue sky blue will be a good spot to start as you're transitioning from that green to blue. 
To make sure it's not too sudden of a transition, I am gonna go and drip some green back into the blue so I can really see those two colors working side by side um, in my artwork. So kind of picking some darker greens that can dip into the blue and make that sort of transition together. Then I'm gonna go ahead and pick a darker blue because a darker blue is gonna get me closer to that purple. And I could of course even just mix my blues and purples to make that sort of in between that blue violet, blue purple stage. But since I have these extra blues that I enjoy using that are a little darker, I'm gonna start with that first and then slowly add in the purple to it. So filling it in with a dark blue, again, that kind of wet on wet technique. Think about leaving some spaces open for highlights sometimes if, um, if you can think ahead. Remember, there's not a really easy way to do white on top of uh, watercolor, at least not with paint. I will show you some ways to use uh, white pens on top of watercolor, which can be super fun, but I'm thinking of using those more for designs and less for um, realistic highlights. If you get too much paint, all you have to do is what I just did is grab a tissue or a paper towel or even a Q-tip and just pull up the paint, soak it up, and it'll lighten up really quick and it'll make less puddles, which can be kind of dangerous because if the puddle breaks or bumps into something, it can start spreading your paint in places that you do not want it. Since I ended up adding that green back to the blue mugs, I realized I didn't really have a nice bright little blue mug all on its own. So this mug, I'm gonna keep it only blue, a little more of that bright blue, just so I can really see the blue color in my rainbow transition across the, the paper here. So it's okay if they're just one color sometimes, you need those kind of anchor colors to really understand where the rainbow is going across. Now we're gonna move into purple, also known as violet. Sometimes people use those to mean the same thing. Sometimes violet is seen as a whole different color. Uh, I don't really have an exact opinion. It just depends on what situation I'm in. Being an elementary art teacher, I say purple because that's what kids know and that's what's, I think, more commonly used. But it is fun to know that violet can be a more official title. Or if you're looking at paints, a lot of them are called violet. So if you're really looking for colors, it's helpful to know that language, of course. Now that I've got my purple mugs, I'm gonna make sure I, again, mix it with those colors beforehand. So I'm gonna go back and add some bits of blue to my pur first purple mug so it feels like it's more of a transition between the blue and the purple. So making sure to take advantage while it's wet to do that if I want those colors to mix. If I wanna add more just kind of flat areas of color, then it can dry first and then those colors won't mix quite as neatly. Instead, they would make kind of a separate design or two separate areas on the mug, which can look pretty cool as well. Last, I'm gonna finish this last corner up with the purple, but I'm gonna to start to kind of lean it back towards red since I have now made it across my full rainbow. It was pretty hard to kind of plan ahead of where colors should go and where they should blend. There's really not like a middle color because there's six, and so I didn't really know which one I should end with the middle. So it just took kind of some experimenting, going back and forth, realizing, oh, I have a lot of greens, I should make some of them blue, or here at the end, okay, I should make some of those purples more blue, or I should make this purple more red. A lot of it's just experimenting as anything is. So if you like the way that I changed and mixed my colors, then you could of course get some ideas from that. But maybe you've got another idea of how you want your colors to gradually change across. It can be fun to even just pick a group of colors that you like. For example, just picking only warm colors, yellows, oranges, and reds. Those look good together no matter what because they're called analogous and analogous colors, they get along really well. They're neighbors on the color wheel. So that could be a fun way to do it too. Now that we've done all our nice, neat designs, I think I want to have some fun with splattering. So I've got this kind of um, bumpy brush that's kind of all bent and bristly. I'm trying to get lots of liquidy paint on the edge and I'm pulling the bristles away from the paper and flicking them back towards the paper. You can try a lot of different methods like tapping, flicking, you can kind of um, hit your brush against the edge of something, whether that's like a cup or another brush. Here I'm actually just touching and making dots appear. You really have to get a lot of liquid on your brush for it to splatter and make dots. However, you have to be careful because then you might end up a really dark or big dot that you might not want. So splattering is kind of a risky thing to add at the end, but I just love it. It feels more like a party, kind of like I said earlier. This just feels like a crazy collection of colors and splattering seem to fit the mood. You definitely don't have to do it. Or maybe you want to practice first on some other paper to see how to control the splatters better. Um, and the closer you are to the paper, the more control you have over it. 
the further away you hold your splatters, the kind of the more wider out they'll go or the more random. So it's totally up to how you're feeling about letting go of control and just letting some splatters happen if you want to. Now it's time to do some of the fun doodling. I'm using two pens. I'm using my Jelly Roll Sakura pen. I'm using my Micron. I believe it's also by Sakura. Uh, Both of these pens uh, work really well on top of watercolor. So my black outline pen, I'm gonna use to kind of do some different doodles. Sometimes I like to start by just tracing the shape of the mug. That can be a really simple way to begin a design. And you could even add in that sort of 3D opening at the top. Most of these designs are pretty flat, but if you want to suggest that 3D element, doing a little oval thing like that can help. This white pen is for, um, well, white lines. It works on top of paint. It will not be perfectly bright white like an empty piece of paper, but it will create a nice, neat design on top. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through some of these things and you can watch me make some different doodles and designs. You can either take some ideas from me or I challenge you to come up with some of your own designs, your own patterns, your own details. Mix back and forth between the black and white if you have both. If you only have one, then just use the one. Use what you've got to create, have fun, um, find some joy in the simplicity of a bunch of little colorful mugs. Uh, Maybe go make some tea to drink while you do it or whatever floats your boat. I had so much fun making this drawing and painting. I hope you did as well and you walk away with some adorable, fun variety of mugs. If you like this one, go check out my channel for other tutorials I have available. You can also find me on Instagram or at my website at alyssawhetstoneart.com. See you next time.